Before we get into the real meat and taters of this thing here, I just wanted to preface the video by saying there's going to be spoilers for the entire season of the Fallout TV show. If you haven't already finished the season, just save this video and come back to it once you've already got everything all wrapped up. Wow, fellas. I mean, just wow. I honestly don't even know what to say other than they absolutely killed this. Now, if you can't already tell from the channel, your boy's a big video game guy. If you can't already tell from the Starfield videos, your boy's a big Bethesda guy, which also means I'm a big Todd Howard guy. We must protect that man at all costs. I know I don't have any videos up on my channel about Fallout, but I absolutely love its games and story. So I was extremely interested to hear about this series coming out. I wasn't immediately excited about anything because there was a part of me that was, of course, skeptical about them ruining a beloved loved franchise with an on-screen adaptation, but once I saw the first trailer, I knew this was going to be a certified hood classic. To break this down a bit better, we're going to chop this video up into four different segments. Story, world, characters, and random stuff that could all be their own category but seem too small for their own category, so we're just going to put them all into one. I'll also have timestamps just in case you want to jump around, but don't you dare think that's an invitation just to skip all the way to the end of this video. You better help your boys watch time out and enjoy every second of this. Right off the bat, this story is so easily identifiable as any other Fallout campaign, but most closely borrows from Fallout 4. The main character, Lucy, is a vault dweller on a quest across the wasteland to save a family member, and along the way she's sidetracked by various different people or quests out in the wasteland. The show also carries a very similar trait from the games where in the beginning of the story, there's a very clear good and evil, but towards the end of the show, the different narratives start to get so intertangled you can't ever really tell who's in the right anymore. The show doesn't directly copy from any particular Fallout game, but instead combines various elements from each game to create its own story and setting. The most notable installments of the Fallout series, New Vegas and Fallout 4, obviously get the most shine with easter eggs, and it doesn't feel gimmicky or cringy. Obviously with any sort of adaptation, there's going to be callbacks to the original material, and as fans, that's what we're here for. But there's a fine line between something working with the story and just being on screen for the sake of being there because it's in the IP. Anytime there's something on screen for the purpose of, hey, that's something in the game, it's something really cool and actually works with the story, whether it's a weapon from the game, Nuka-Cola, or Brotherhood of Steel power armor. On a more general note though, in terms of the narrative, there's some things that honestly happen just because plot. I mean, some things just don't make sense why it happens, but you just have to accept you're watching a show and move on. It's not ever something that seriously kills the immersion of the story or anything, but if you're coming in here with your detective glasses on, you might see some scenes where you're like, huh, that doesn't make sense. In terms of overall feeling, this show is very gory and satirical at the same time. I don't know why I didn't really expect this level of violence, but it was 100% needed for a show like this and 1000% works. It's also extremely corny at times, but it's never out of place. The general awkward humor is used well and aligned with the story. Next, the world they built for this show is fantastic. The setting for the story is Southern California, and it's meant as a nod to every game besides Fallout 3 and 4, which both take place in Washington, DC, and Boston. As a fan of the games, I thought everything in here looked nice. I mean, the sets really look like photocopies from the game, down to every last detail. There's not a note they didn't hit with this. The vault scenes are straight spitting images of the games. I almost started looking around for the controller like, hey yo, who's playing this right now? The flashback scenes before the do a great job at capturing the old-timey yet futuristic pre-war feeling that's present across all games. And the wasteland is pretty freaking desolate, dude. I'm not gonna lie, this would have been pretty hard to mess up. I mean, it's just a barren nuclear wasteland, but they didn't trip. It looks really good and has a huge mix of various different POIs from the games, which is always really cool to see. Jumping over to the characters, I thought this was something they executed extremely well. First off, I didn't notice anyone in here that's from the actual games, but in terms of main people, besides just Lucy, you have Maximus and the ghoul, who also have their main sort of storyline going on with different inspirations and agendas. Multiple main characters is cool because it's almost a way of representing the various routes and endings a Fallout game can have through the different factions and NPC characters. I mean, the whole overarching goal for everybody of the show is to get this head, but every main character along with the different groups of people all have their own motives and reasons why it's important. The different dynamics between the characters also showcases the different personas a player can take on into the different games. Lucy and the ghoul are two perfect depictions of two different experiences people can have in a playthrough, whether you want to be friendly and helpful like Lucy or cutthroat and merciless like the ghoul. 
While we're talking about the characters too, I also just want to mention my final conclusions for each of the big three, if I like personally liked them or not, because that was something I tried taking notes on during my time watching. Starting with Lucy, I liked Lucy, because obviously, I mean, what's not to like about her? She's the main, main character, and it's so easy to relate her story to a Fallout campaign. I mean, if this show was a game, you'd be playing as her. She's also noble, genuine, pretty badass at times, and a good person. I mean, the show does nothing but build her up. Next, I also like the ghoul. Personally, he had the most interesting dynamic of this whole show, being someone from before the first bombs fell. It was really cool to see how the show mixed in the flashbacks of his life before the bombs, and how it shows him starting to figure out all the secret vault tech stuff going on. And he also has easily the most badass scenes of the entire show. I mean, anytime this dude is on screen, he is there to rain down eternal hellfire upon his enemies. The show not holding back on violence really helps him out too. I mean, there's some pretty brutal scenes in here where I was kind of sitting up from the couch like, holy crap, what am I watching? And last but certainly not least, I didn't really like Maximus. I don't know if it was the acting or the writing, but he's almost too awkward in some scenes. Even the girl that lived in a vault her whole life seems more natural. It's just weird. And his whole Brotherhood of Steel arc didn't really feel deserved. The show just ends with him being being knighted after the battle, but what did bro even really do the whole show? Most of the time I even thought about him, I couldn't stop thinking about his big lie he was building up from letting that other knight die in the woods. It feels like the writers want you to like him, like he's supposed to be this underdog to root for, but at the same time, not? I don't even know how to describe it, but I can't be the only one that felt that way. Dude was just kind of weird the whole time. Part of the problem could be he was pretending to be somebody else for half of the show, but I mean, who knows? Before moving on, I'd also like to give an award real quick here to the uh, biggest NPC from the entire show. And that would definitely have to be the old shop lady in Philly. She's literally just there to be mean to the main character, give her a quest, and then you never hear from her again. I mean, what a dedicated role. I feel like I've seen her in like 10 other video games. Let's give up some nice golf claps for her. Switching over to the random stuff category here. Okay, I wanted to first start out with the man, the myth, Todd Howard. Okay. I should have shoehorned this somewhere in the beginning of the video, but it's important to note that Papa Todd was an executive producer for this show. So you already know there was no way in hell he was going to let this be any less than it was supposed to be. Next, I want to talk about the sh sound design for this show because it damn near made me cry. I mean, I never in a million years would have thought I would have loved music from the 40s and 50s so much, but Fallout just knows me better than I know myself. The music in Fallout is very distinct and recognizable to the franchise, and this show does a brilliant job of putting it on display for the series. The scenes are masterfully mixed with some scoobity bops playing over some crazy intense action scene and it does nothing but bring a big smile to my face. I mean, this really might have been the big, this is Fallout cherry on top for me. The music is just beautiful. They also mix various other sounds from the game, whether that's intro music or sound effects. A really cool use of this is when Lucy drinks from a pool of water in the wasteland, and you can hear the radiation tick noises from the game, indicating homegirl is drinking some not good water right now. Next on our random stuff list, the ghoul's real name is Cooper Howard. And you cannot tell me that's not a reference to the man, the myth, the Todd Howard, okay? They definitely had to shoehorn him in here somewhere, and the last name is a great addition. It's a huge part in the game, but subtle at the same time, and that's how our boy Todd operates, okay? Next random note number four, the intros for each episode are sick. I mean, I thoroughly enjoyed just seeing the various different Fallout screens pop up. Random note number five, there's a bunch of different factions and creatures we don't see in this show, like Deathclaws or Super Mutants, or Caesar's Legion, or the Institute, but come on now fellas, they can't just blow their whole load in season one. The show is gearing up for a season two, and I definitely think we'll be seeing a lot more of the Fallout world in that. Speaking of which, that brings us to our random note number six, and they're 1000% going to have a season two for this show. They've already set it up, and the first season killed, so they probably already got the green light. But more importantly, they showed the city of New Vegas right at the end, which is insane. I mean, this first season was just kind of dipping its toe in the universe, not really intermingling with what the games have going on. Anyone who's played Fallout New Vegas can look at that city, that tower, and instantly know what this is. So I'm extremely excited and curious to see how they work that into the story of the show. In conclusion, your honor, this show banged. If I had to wrap this all up into a rating today, 1 to 10, I think I'm going to hit it with a 9. As it is right now, I honestly can't find anything I don't really like about the show. I mean, I really felt like everything in here worked, and in terms of video game adaptations, they completely knocked this out of the park. The only reason I'm not saying it's a 10 is because it's certainly not the best TV show I've ever seen before. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely loved watching it, but like... Is Fallout one of the greatest shows ever gifted to mankind? No, of course not. 
I understand I'm extremely captivated because I'm a Fallout fan, so someone with no prior knowledge of the games might not see it for the masterpiece that I do, but either way, I think someone can still hop in this show and end up liking it previous fan or not. Well that's gonna about do it here for the review today. If you enjoyed the video make sure to drop a like and subscribe for more content like this. I really appreciate it. Also if you've been watching Fallout comment down below and let me know what you think of the show. This has been Lunar and welcome to Bound.